Hello friends, myself Professor Vinod Pillai. Welcome to C++ programming session. In today's session, I'll be talking about exception handling. That's part two of my session. I do expect you have already seen my part one of my session. If you have not seen, I'll request you to please have a look on it or else you should have basic idea of exception handling. That is what is try, catch and all those keywords which I've explained in the part one of my session. Yes, I've received some of the requests from my user, viewers that I should speak a little bit slow so that they also should be able to understand because as this video is being watched by many people from different countries and maybe it may be some countries are not English speaking also. So or maybe my speech is having too much fast maybe I may be my mistake so I will be trying to speak a little bit slow so that each and every users should be able to get this thing so let's start the session in today's session we'll be talking about multiple catch blocks that means we have a function or we have a try block which in which try block it may be possible it may throw an integer or it may throw a exception of character or it may throw a floating how we can handle these different types of exceptions in single try block we'll be seeing today that second we'll be seeing that is throwing an exception that means not only simple throw it may be possible we have an method in the particular method there is no try and catch but it is still throwing an exception so it is the responsibility of whoever is calling that method to catch that exception so we'll be seeing that also then finally we'll be seeing how we can handle any type of exception that means we have only kept catch for integer and catch for float but if suppose if a character is thrown then how to handle that also so all these concepts will be seen today with the help of example so let's start with an example only directly in which I have implement all the concepts so it will be more easier for you to understand it so in this example to show you what I have done is I have created two functions that is test1 and test2 okay so test1 and test2 exception test exception 1 and test exception 2 are the two methods in which I have tried to explain all the concepts so before going into that let's see the main method what is main is happening main is calling directly test1 exception okay so with that so automatically call goes to this method what I've tried to show you is that it may be possible that you want to handle multiple types of catch okay so in this way in your program you can include multiple catch blocks that is first catch which may handle integer values second catch which in this scenario handling character values third catch which may handle float values so in this way you can have n number of catch values to handle different data types now the third is quite odd for you people that is a catch without any excess space I mean data type it is simply saying three dots okay so this is a special catch block if this catch block is kept if any of the throw is done here which is not being handled like the throw 10.56 which is a floating value which will not be handled by integer and character then this catch block will handle it so this is a special catch block to handle any type of exception so in this example I've shown two things that is one is how to handle multiple catch blocks in a single try and how to create a special catch block to handle any type of exception so let's try this example out first we'll throw integer and I know that integer is a block already there now second thing I want to mention here is that if first throw is there which is of integer type then no other throw whichever comes in the bottom of this code will not be executed so it doesn't matter you throw here a character value or not that's why I have kept these two codes here as a comment so as expected main method will call this method it goes into the try block it picks that it has thrown some exception of in 100 an integer value catch will handle it other all catch will not be executed at a time only single catch will be executed that is also an important point so let's try this out first thing so I'm calling I'm just compiling it so it's compiled it's asking me a value 
so see seriously if you see here it has directly went into this and it has thrown an integer exception has been generated okay so here you can see that the exception integer is been called and it is been executed that an integer exception is created here and it is been caught by this person okay so I hope so you understand that now for the character also it will be same so I'll just run it out first I clear this thing so you'll be able to see much more clear way so I cleared it I compile it I run it so you can see a character exception has occurred so here we know that we have handled for integer and character what happens if a float exception has occurred because we don't have any special catch for float so what happens then again I compile it I'm sorry I didn't save it this one so first I save it I compile it and execute it see all exception that means the special catch exception has been executed so I explained like how to handle multiple catch and how to have a special catch exception now let's come to this portion that is again what happens here in this scenario that is I'm calling the exception test exception 2 now in this scenario what is happening is this complete method calling is done in a try block so as and when the exception to test exception to method is called it comes over here it says enter a value if the value is less than zero a throw has been done here but the point to be important noted here is that this test exception to does not have any try block so automatically as such it is not having any try block so the exception is not handled in this particular area so it will return to the method whoever has called him that is the main method and the main method should have a try block okay so if that try block is there and the thrown value is an integer type then it should be caught here okay and if it will be caught here and whatever method is written here whatever catch block is written will be executed let's try that also so I compile it I run it so in this case I'm passing explicitly passing a value less than zero zero so you can see rethrowing exception has occurred and here is the this particular code has been executed so let's see what happens if suppose someone throws a character value and which is because let's compile it and let's run it and I'm passing 0 so now you can see is termination has been occurred now what is this problem has occurred the problem is that the flow always goes here in this way a throw has been occurred so it is the responsibility of this method to handle that exception he didn't do it so it passes that call to the whoever has called that method that's the main method in our case he tries to solve it here but he also didn't able to do that then in that case it will be passed to the compiler because the main method is being executed by them okay so main method is called by him so it has been passed to the compiler the compiler executes it and it terminates the program because it says like an exception has occurred okay no necessary steps has been taken but it will simply abort the exception okay so this is the general flow which has been followed while exception handling is done okay so I hope so I've cleared your doubts how to handle multiple exception handlings how to throw an exception from a one method to another method that is in this case how to have all exception handling in a single catch block only okay I request you users not to put this catch block you should always try to put this catch block at the last because if you put it here then the sequence is followed that means any throw comes he can handle any catch so if put it here then that catch will be handled then no other catches at the bottom will be executed so this is the important point you should remember if you're using a special catch block it should be at the last okay other all things whatever is important I've explained if you have still any queries you can write comment to this video you can find all codes relevant to this video at my blog we know the best dot wordpress dot com if you like my video please do subscribe my videos Okay, thank you and have a nice day.